cardiovascular system is the transportation system of the body. Cardio refers to the heart, and vascular refers to the blood vessels that take the blood from the heart to all parts of the body. Hi, I'm Kathy Getrust. I'm an instructor in community health, and today we're going to be talking about cardiovascular diseases. Some of the main functions of the cardiovascular system are to carry food, water, oxygen, and other vital substances to the cells, remove waste products from the cells, help control body temperature, and help maintain fluid balance. The cardiovascular system is made up of blood, blood vessels, and the heart. Blood, as you all know, is the red fluid that carries nutrients, chemicals, and waste products of the body. Average amount of blood in our bodies at any given time is about four to six quarts. The blood consists of two portions. There's the plasma, which is the liquid portion and the lighter colored one on, uh, that you're seeing. And there's the blood cells, which is the dark red um, portion of the blood. Blood carries oxygen and nutrients to the cells of the body and carries away from those cells carbon dioxide and other waste products. The blood is distributed through the body by way of blood vessels. Blood vessels that carry oxygenated blood away from the heart are called arteries. Oxygenated blood is blood that has oxygen added to it. As these blood vessels branch out, they become smaller and smaller until they are so thin that they are called capillaries. Capillaries are only one cell thick. Through these walls, gases, nutrients, and other substances are exchanged. After the blood cells have given up their oxygen to the cells in all parts of the body and exchanging other substances, it returns back to the heart by way of the veins. The heart is a pear-shaped muscular organ that's located in the chest slightly to the left of the breastbone or sternum. This breastbone and the ribs on either side of it help protect it from injury. This efficient pump beats approximately 100,000 times a day to circulate blood to approximately 100,000 miles of blood vessels throughout the body. The heart is divided into a right and left half by tissue in the center called a septum. Each half consists of two chambers, a right atrium and right ventricle, and a left atrium and left ventricle. The heart has a specialized conduction system that's responsible for the initiation and maintenance of the heartbeat. An electrocardiogram, sometimes just called an EKG, records the heart's electrical activity on a graph for, for analysis by healthcare professionals. Through the EKG, disturbances in the normal conduction system may identify some heart disease. As a person grows older, the movement of blood through the body tends to slow down. The heart muscle weakens, so the heart pumps blood with less force. The reduced output of the heart is one reason why older people tend to tire more easily than younger people do. The heart may also change in size. If it works harder to circulate the blood through the vessels, the greater work causes the heart to grow much larger, much like lifting weights will increase the size of muscles. Blood vessels also can change as well. With age, they can harden and lose their ability to stretch. This causes them to narrow. Fatty deposits and other substances can also clog up these narrowed vessels. 
There are two main types of cardiovascular disorders. Problems with the blood vessels that supply our body with the oxygen and nutrients it needs, and problems with the heart itself. First, I'll be talking about problems that occur with the blood vessels. Arterial sclerosis is a narrowing and hardening of the arteries. Maybe you've heard the term hardening of the arteries. That uh, medical term is called arterial sclerosis. The arteries can also become clogged with fat and other substances called plaque to further narrow the inner lining of the vessel. Blood flow through these vessels is decreased, causing a lack of blood supply to body cells beyond that narrowed and hardened area. This condition is especially dangerous if it occurs in blood vessels in the brain, in the heart, or blood vessels that lead to the lower part of our body in our legs. When the vessels of the brain are affected, the risk is high for a person to have a stroke or CVA, also called cardiovascular accident or brain attack. When vessels of the heart are affected, the person can sustain a myocardial infarction or heart attack. When the vessels of the leg are affected, the person may experience a cool skin temperature, they may have swelling, they may have uh, pain on walking, and also can develop uh, leg ulcers. When the arteries throughout the body are affected, high blood pressure may occur, also called hypertension. Varicose veins are another type of blood vessel disorder. These swollen, distended veins are especially prominent in the legs. Varicose veins can cause or can be caused by a lack of activity, can be caused by prolonged standing, obesity, as well as a loss of elasticity of the veins associated with aging. The signs and symptoms include a dull pain or cramping in the legs, and visibly prominent uh, twisted and dilated veins that are visible uh, by the eye. Treatment includes such measures as wearing elasticized stockings, elevating the legs, not crossing the legs when sitting, and providing for leg exercises. In severe cases, Varicose veins may be tied off or stripped with a surgical procedure to decrease the threat of blood clots and leg ulcers. Another type of blood vessel disorder is called a cerebral vascular accident, or CVA. As I mentioned before, it's more commonly called a stroke. This is where there is a blockage due to a blood clot in the brain, or it can also be caused by a hemorrhage in a blood vessel. A blood clot formation in the brain is much more common, however. When this occurs, the patient may experience weakness or paralysis of any extremity or their face, or particularly it occurs on just one side and not both. So it might be one-sided weakness where the arm and leg become weak as well as one side of the face may experience some drooping. They also might have visual disturbances, uh, may only be on one side of the body that they notice that they are having difficulty seeing. There can be difficulty with speech, some slurred uh, speech, some difficulty with swallowing, they may have loss of balance or stumbling that you notice when you're caring for them. Or they might have a change in their thinking called cognition. Example that comes to mind is I was with an elder friend and we were at the checkout counter at a grocery store and he had purchased a number of things 